Welcome back to SAFC Live. We're delighted to tell you Sunderland have come through this afternoon's fixture against Millwall by three goals to nil. Danny, it was a, a really great second half in particular. It was, yeah. I thought straight from the first whistle of the second half, we needed to be at it to up the tempo. And it, and it was really, we controlled a lot of the, a lot of the play. And uh, as I just said there, got the goal at the right time when so, sometimes it's okay having a lot of the ball, but it's what you do with it. And then from Alex Pritchard down this left-hand side, well worked move and then got into the box get that goal and then you could just feel the, the relief in the stadium and then we controlled the game after that went on and got the second and then obviously topped it off at the end with the Ella Sims with the third let's have a look at some of the action then from this afternoon's fixture and we can talk over the action as well yeah, the referee <laughs> playing his part this afternoon luckily Sunderland doing their talking with the football and not necessarily having to speak about the referee yeah. too much but there was a few of those yeah, well, obstructional ones two especially that one and yeah. Lyndon, Lyndon Goops wasn't the second half which he, which he missed for me but uh, yeah in terms of the action in general I thought Millwall they, they picked up a lot of those loose second balls in the first half which which they never in the, in the sorry in the first half but they never in the second half and uh, we, we did take a while to get going and we said it in the comms it's always a worry when you've had a, a long time off in terms of two weeks yeah we had that friendly out in, uh, in Dubai didn't we but yep. you know getting back to it today we never really got out the blocks if we're honest and they made it a difficult game you know they, they've got some big units in the team Cooper there with the overhead kick thankfully straight at Anthony Patson but he's a, he's a handful coming up from the back from set plays and, and Cresswell alongside him uh, but we, we, we did struggle if we're honest in that first half and that one there, wasn't it? Danny Bart, we just mentioned him again. Danny, solid excellence throughout the game. Uh, bailed us out with this one. Yeah, the crowd off the were line. appreciative of Danny Bart as well as he came off the pitch there. It's the first time I've heard him, the crowd singing his name yeah, in getting particular. A, getting a little sing-song, wasn't he, Danny? And rightly so, he's been excellent this season, Danny. Uh, that one there, Kadam had have hit it first on time his right. on his right. Yeah, I think if yeah. it falls on his left on the other side, he's tucking that one away. I think as soon as he looks up, he sees a defender coming across yeah. him. So maybe he's yeah. thinking, right, I'll yeah. drop one on my left, but... Yeah, he, did, he didn't buy it, Wallace, to be no. fair. He, he put the brakes on, didn't he, and stood him up. And uh, as I said, the opportunity went away from him. That one there was our only first uh, real effort in that first half from Ellis Sims. Similar to the one down at, um, at Birmingham. Obviously, a little bit further out, just inside the 18-yard box. Drills it through Cooper's legs, but straight at the goalkeeper. And this one right at half-time. And I'm saying, just keep it coming out this way. He does, not he goes back in. Pato trying to be a little bit clever, feeding it into Corey Evans. Fleming reads it, look, he just shifts to his there, puts him in, he could have had a touch there because Corey can't make a challenge, he's behind him. From his point of view, as he tried to be a little bit clever, he's yeah, got the hat-trick last time he out and just tried to, to. Yeah. casually slot it in that bottom corner. That was their big opportunity and if, if they're 1-0 then, game changes path, doesn't it really? Uh, but then we're into, say, into the second half now. Alex Pritchard, it was bright for 15, 20 minutes at the start of the half. That's all he got. <laughs> early, early, well, the damage was done, to be fair yeah. to him. He played, this is it. And get a little bit of luck off the little one-two, really. Determination, that great determination. It is, yeah. And then he, a little bit of composure, just fizzes it across. Good flick from Ellis Sims. Yeah, the, the, that has to be noted, doesn't it? Because yeah. if it wasn't for the flick, it's not getting to yeah. Ahmad. I mean, if he overs it, maybe it's coming to Ahmad anyway, but he's, he's not sure. And he hasn't got that time, really, to shout it because it's fizzed in from Alex Pritchard. See it back now, look. So Cresswell, yeah, heavy touch, plays it back into his path. And you just keep an eye on it now, but it's Wallace there. He's left with a couple behind him, and there's Ahmad there. How would you like it? Two yards out at the far post for a tap-in. And he's carried on where he left off, really. Did he go down at Huddersfield, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, goal at Birmingham. And another one this afternoon. So he, he's flying it, just his general game as well. You know, if you're obviously going to ask for a man of the match, I, I think we'd have to go for Ahmad. But big mentions for, for several other players that were out there this afternoon as well. Lads at the back, thought Sims done well in general up against Cooper um, and, and played his part in there and gets his goal late on as well, what he deserved. Yeah, great stuff for Mamad. Tapping tap in, in the end, but he was involved in a lot of action for Sunderland. Millwall still threatened at times in the second half, but didn't really lay a glove on us no, properly, no, did they, they? They had two or three efforts, didn't they? What? Straight at Anthony Patterson. That one there, Danny Bart does really well to shift his feet. It's took a nick off Corey Evans. And I think it's uh, it's Bradshaw just in behind him waiting for a tap in. Dan Neal on the line that, that time. There. Yeah, Dan Neal. It's what you want there, switching on, because he's, he's in that sort of near post space. So you're looking after the front post. And he's just aware, gets himself back on the line and uh, keeps us keeps us in front of that stage. It was 1 0, wasn't it? Great grab from second. Gooch on the right hand side. Pulls it back for Pritchard, who finds his gap. Yeah, so gets he's got it three or four feet. touches, doesn't he? And, and you know, see, see, when we see it from behind, I think I'll oh, keep it do better, but. Give the benefit of the doubt. He's got three or four bodies in front, and you'll see it in a minute. Sims is in front of him, I think Cresswell as well. This one, it doesn't look great for the keeper. We'll look at one, two, three, four, five, six touches from Pritchard, trying to get a yard. But when we see it, 
but it's not going to be this one. It's one looking down the line of it. Wallace there can't commit there. Gooch has chopped him. These two here can't put the brakes on. Cooper can't put the brakes on either. I think Cresswell's in his eye line. Yeah, this is the one. Now, have a look now. Yeah, you've got Number Cresswell 15. and Sims. Look, see there. By the time it's come <laughs> through the bodies, it's the wrong side of him, isn't it? And, yeah. You know, in slow mo, it doesn't look great for him. But uh, I say I'll help him out there and say he's got bodies in front of him. And then, and then we just controlled the game. Yeah, you feel like the damage was done with the second, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, took the stuffing out. Then they made the five changes, three and a two, didn't they? Uh, I thought Mason Bennett did okay when he came on, on that left hand side, few balls into the box. Uh, but in general, we've done all right. Anthony Patterson did have one or two to make. These are the ones I mean, Types 25 yards ones, out. Yeah. Straight at him, though, really, weren't they? There is the one we'll see later on where he had to smother it, didn't he, with the cross coming. Um, and it always oh, the third now. We're not going to see it straight onto it. And there's Ellis Sims there, long ball. Do you know what I'll say? When you see it, I don't think Anthony Patterson struck it as he would have liked. It's got it's like a bit of a wobbler, and the defender misreads the flight of it. Cresswell, but as you want your striker there, sniffing one out, he's onto it. Keeper comes flying out, not getting there. Could have clattered into Ellis Sims. He'd have probably got sent off, but he didn't. And then Cooper's left high and dry, can't get back in. And there's Ellis Sims. And they say back to back goals for him as well. Yeah, fair play to him because he mordered away all, all afternoon, didn't yeah, he? For, yeah, difficult. For up against the, you know, Ellis Sims is six foot four, but you've got Cooper who's six six or something in behind him. You know, big tough centre half, but I thought he, he held his own against him this afternoon. And that one there, Malone, you know, comes out to him on this, on this right hand side, on his left foot, and just drills it straight at Anthony Patterson. So delighted for the lads at the back. Luke O'Nine coming back in, done well. I thought it was first half difficult up against Bradshaw, you know. Wasn't really dominating with those balls coming forward, but second half he reads situations well. Luke, when he plays at the back, good cover for Luke O'Neill. Uh, sorry for Linden when he was getting forward on that right hand side. But Danny Bart, excellent. You know, Adji Lise uh, mentioned to him, made a good sliding challenge down it. He's feeling it, his calves, I think, a little bit of cramp. Obviously, he's been out for a couple of games as well, hasn't he? So uh, yeah, delighted for the boys at the back. The three changes from the from the Birmingham game. Um, so you want clean sheets, especially here at the Stadium of Light and back to winning ways at the Stadium of Light as well. Let's see what that does for the league table, what it does for Sunderland's league table uh, position. Obviously, the only team in action were Millwall as well as Sunderland this afternoon. Sunderland up to 10th and just looking upwards, which, you know, Sunderland fans will always do as yeah. optimists. Uh, Queen's Park Rangers sit in 6 now. Millwall dropped the place. Dropped Millwall the place. Goal difference there. Goal yeah. difference there. And uh, Sunderland up to 10th. Just a point outside the playoffs. All, all the, uh, sorry, all the teams as well played 21 games there as well. Look, this was our game in hand, wasn't it? Because yeah. when the Queen died. Coventry just below was obviously out the table there, but I think they've only played 18 or 19. They've got a couple of games in hand going well. But, yeah, it's tightened up, hasn't it? Was it four teams on 31 points? Um, that's how tight the league can be, and that's why it's important to get on a run of results. You know, I'm not saying we have to go and win every game, but you go five, six unbeaten, you know, maybe four wins, a couple of draws, keep the momentum going, and that's what happens. And you find yourself getting back up there, the top end of the table. Oh, only 11 off top. Go on, we can kick <laughs> on second half of the season. Yeah, still a long way to go. Yes, that's yeah. how the championship table looks this evening. Uh, let's have a look at some of your thoughts now from around the world on hashtag Ask Danny. Ahmad, man of the match, incredible effort today. A Canadian opinion from Toronto. Thank you, Safi, for getting in touch. Yeah, no, we've said it there and we Ahmad. We keep speaking about week in, week out and... Yeah, I've said it in terms of a man of the match. It's hard to look past him, isn't it? His involvement, he got his goal as well. And I thought in that first half where for, I didn't think we were at it for, for 25 minutes. Um, and then after that, he, he, he gets into the game. And when you've got players like him in the game, you know, Jack Clark, you've seen a few of his, his clips here. Look, now he's just got good feet, hasn't he? And at times he makes defenders look silly. You don't want to commit. I said it there, Wallace. You don't want to dive in because he just shifts it that quick and he's past you. Um, I think that well, one we there. said it during the game as well. He has this yeah, weird this kind of now, sense of there. gravity as yeah. well, yeah. where he can't get shoved off the ball. Yeah. At times, he's holding off six foot five defenders with yeah. his right arm, with his you know his back facing them, and they just can't get anywhere near yeah. him. And he's, you know he can't be much taller than well, you know it's, it's five like, and a half foot, yeah, can he? And probably nine stone, isn't yeah. he? As well, but no, what he does as well, and it's what you try and teach younger players as well: get your body between the defender and the ball. And he does it; he just puts his foot on the ball, buys himself a bit of time, and and looks for his options. Um, but it's not, you know, what do you say about his game in general? He had to bide his time. We've said it before. He had to bide his time coming into the team. And since he's got into the team, he hasn't looked back. He's he's, one he's arguably been week in, week first out. First half, he just sees that yeah, one out for a goal kick. Defensive work as well, um, helping out back there. Good engine on him. Um, obviously, predominantly right-footed. But uh, no, he's, he's a joy to watch. You know, you look at, for me, he's an Aidan McGeady, isn't he? When Aidan was in his 
in confident mood. He's getting on the ball out wide. You're on the edge of your seat thinking, what's going to happen here now? And, and same with Ahmad for me. As soon as he receives the ball. You find him all over the park, yeah. Danny. And what, yeah, because when he's not receiving the ball high up, if he's had a quiet five minutes, he does. He drops in it. As if to say, listen, lads, give me the ball. How old is he again? Is he, is Very young. 20, about 20, 21, 20, I think. 20, 21, yeah. But he's mature beyond his years, I think, in terms of his mentality. And, you know, whether that, listen, he went to Man United for 30 odd million quid, didn't he? And he's come here now. I'm not saying he's come here as if he's got to prove himself because you can see there's a good player in there. But he's come here. He knows he's played for a big club, certainly at this level as well. Well, I think he is proving and himself. He, yeah, and, but he, for me, it's like he wants to be the star of the show, in, you know, playing in an arena like this. Give me the ball and let me show you what I've got in the, in the bag. Look at the tools I've got and what I can produce. Uh, and he's doing that week in, week out for us. Fantastic stuff from Ahmad this afternoon. Uh, I wonder if we can have a look now at the next hashtag, Ask Danny here, on the programme, the post-game programme, which is uh, available as well the next day on YouTube for some of the fans around the world. Uh, this is from the uh, from Scott, who says, uh, who says, what do you think about the game player playing from the back? Has it... Uh, has rest been useful to the team? So, first of all, take that second point. Has the rest been useful? Um, I think in the I, long I, run. Yeah, in the long yeah, run. yeah, yeah, we'll see that. It's hard to judge, yeah. isn't it? If you're looking at the first half, I'd say, no, it's always difficult. I've been there myself, international breaks sometimes. Um, you know, you go away, you have a few days in the sun, you relax a little bit, um, you know, you sat by the pool, then all of a sudden you've got to snap out of that, and especially for the boys where they've been to Dubai, yeah. 30 plus degrees, and then all of a sudden they're <laughs> Back coming. Back to reality. <laughs> if they were here Tuesday, I was watching my little lad playing rugby on Tuesday, freezing for two hours, and I'm thinking of the lads coming back from Dubai, and then all of a sudden, bang, you're back at it against Millwall, a team who have been going well, and you've got to adjust. Um, and, and I thought we did take time to adjust in that first half, if we're honest. The tempo wasn't quite there, and that... I'm guessing at half-time they've had a few words between themselves, Tony Moby and the staff, said, listen, come on, boys, we're better than that. There's more in us than what we've showed in the first half. And it's another championship and we team we've came up against and we more than competed with them and, you know, we've beat them yeah, on, and, on and, the and, pitch. But they, these are a good side. They finished just outside the playoffs last season. Yep. They're no mugs. There's six before a ball was kicked this afternoon. Yeah, and then I think they've won four of the last six before today as well, so they're in good form. You mentioned it there, down at Preston, tough place to go, not conceding, put four past them last time out. So they will have been confident coming here today. And if it wasn't um, for our mistakes, they wouldn't yeah. really have had a clear cut on goal. No, yeah, the big one, wasn't it? Right on half-time, yeah. uh, Fleming, Anthony Patterson plays him in, centre of goal, really, and he puts it past the post and said there the game would have perhaps mapped out a little bit different had he have took that away. Yeah. Thankfully, he never. And then second half, we upped it. We controlled the game. Even in the first half, without the tempo, we didn't look after the ball well enough. But yeah. second half, we did. You know, you're not say an arrogance about you, but when you get yourselves in front, that's what you've got to do. You're experienced players. You've got to say, listen, boys, relax on the ball just move the ball and it frustrates the opposition and as a player when you're not getting a touch on the ball and you're just chasing shadows really it deflates you and they made changes didn't really impact it too much did they yeah you could see that yeah. deep in the second half Millwall yeah. were you know they, they'd seen the, yeah, the, the that, game that, that press wasn't them. there really yeah, it I wasn't, wasn't sat no. off us in 4-4-2 yeah. and we, we played through them a little bit easier um, and then when you've got Ahmad and these types of lads on the ball and you're thinking oh god here we go again um, so all in all it, it looks comfortable on you know 3-0 over the course of 90 minutes, it perhaps wasn't a 3-0 game, if we're honest, but no. Uh, no, the vital moments today, we got the goals when we needed to. Let's have a look at the final thought in Hashtag Ask Danny this afternoon. Comes in from Ollie, who says, uh, when do we think Ross Stewart will make an appearance? I hope next fixture, him and Sims will make a great striking force alongside Jack and Ahmad. What do you think about that? Uh, well, in terms of the two playing together, they did get a few games in earlier in the season. Was it uh, Bristol City, wasn't it, away? Um what do we have, 3 2 down there? Both played together. It's like first goal, I think, where Ross has read it and then Ellis has, has tucked it away, hasn't it? So, yeah, I'm sure they can work well together. And from a opposition's defensive point of view, are you going to look at that team sheet and think, Phew. two big units? You know, Ross is obviously mobile as well and Ellis as well. When he gets when he gets going, they can both run. Um, so they're not going to be an easy pairing for you know any centre halves in this league to come up against when them two are at it. I think, um, you know, I think the fans coming here today think, is he going to be back in there? But you've said that Tony Mowbray spoke, hasn't he, in the week and saying he's yeah. perhaps looked at it thinking, well, if he's not been putting in the full training, I don't think he's been training full sessions with the boys, so it makes sense to give him another week. We don't play till a week on Monday, do we? So it's sort of eight games, eight, nine games before that, that next game. Is it West Brom? I think we've got next. Yep. Um, so he's just getting a full week's training him and then bring him off the bench, I'd imagine. If, get him on the bench, bring him on for 10, 15 minutes, obviously see how that game goes because we brought Ellis back a little bit sooner than perhaps we would have liked. 
Now, he's had them couple of weeks, hasn't he, off to, to get up for... And I think it showed today as well. I think he looked quite sharp at times across the pitch. Um, but, yeah, from our point of view, we want to see Ross back out there. And, obviously, he's picking the team there. He wants to see Jack and Ahmad either side of him. But whatever we've got in that, that top top half of the pitch... You can't imagine he's going to come straight back into the starting no, 11. No, no, no. No, he's not for me, no. I think, does he need to? You just won 3-0 today. Yeah. Yes, we want to see Ross Stewart back out there, but you can bide your time and bring him back in because it was his thigh body pulled, didn't he, in the, yeah. in the warm-up against Middlesbrough. Now, all of a sudden, if he goes sprinting down the channel, he'll have had to do a lot of work with the physios and those testing ones where he is going to do a lot of sprint work to see how his leg is. But, yeah, I just think easing back into it. You know, you've got Ellis up there. You won't perhaps see too many changes from the team next week against West Brom um, from what we've seen today. But it's good competition. You know, Dan Ballard, I think, isn't... He's getting back into it. Um, you've obviously had Niall Huggins, who's back, wasn't involved today. I'm not sure if Niall's felt something or he's just not involved. But you've got good competition for places in that squad. Uh, but yeah, once once everyone's out there to pick from, I think you know you want to see your main man Ross Stewart on the starting eleven in the team sheet, and obviously Ellis there pushing him or playing alongside him, whatever it is, whatever Tony Mowbray and the staff decide to go with. Um, but it's interesting. You've got Pritchard to squeeze in there. Jack Clark, Patrick Roberts, Ahmad, these players in the top half of the pitch who will get into most teams in the championship. OK, Danny, thanks for your company this afternoon as well. Sunderland have come out in their first game since the uh, mid-season break. Uh, we still have the World Cup to enjoy, of course, but they are back in action here on SFC Live Monday, the 17th of December against West Bromwich Albion here at the Stadium of Light. 8pm kickoff for that one, so we'll be on air from 7.30 here on SFC Live. Whatever you're doing this weekend, take care. Good luck to Bailey.